Now, next generation. Now, this is sort of secret stuff. You know, this is sort of. No, we're not recording, know. so it's yeah. okay. <laughs> With ultra wideband, you're getting now resolutions of like a few inches. Oh, wow. Right. We used to be able to tell, you know, where you were within several meters. Yeah. Now now you could tell, you know, where I'm sitting, where you're sitting to not only good accuracy, but, at you know, at a high refresh rate. And so this brings up whole new ways of doing location services and, and capabilities for tracking things, for example, yeah. for wayfinding. So look forward to that next generation and these type of location services because you can plug it into a USB port today. Hey everyone, it's David Bumble here at Cisco Live with a very special guest, Matthew. Welcome. Hey, happy to be here. Looking forward to talking about wireless. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we were talking, you know, offline. You got excited when I said, "Let's go technical." So I'm really glad to hear that. So let's go really technical. Wi-Fi's changed the world, basically. We have gone from five to six now, six E. But I don't want to jump the gun. Tell us why six was important. 60 and then perhaps 7, 8, is that coming? Yeah, actually it is. In fact, you know, the 7 specifications are pretty much done. We're actually working on the Wi-Fi 8 specifications oh, wow. now. So so I always have to be a little bit careful when I say that because people will say, oh, maybe I'll wait for Wi-Fi 8. Exactly. We're, we're talking 5, some, you know, <laughs> we're talking a ways out. Wi-Fi 8's not available yet, but some of the new things that are coming are really cool. But I mean, if we start... Um, back at the beginning, there's been some fundamental changes in Wi-Fi. Yeah. And this is what's so exciting because, you know, Wi-Fi for a long time is kind of a best effort technology. Exactly, yeah. You know, you'd listen, you'd talk, and if you collided, you backed off. And so when it came to things like latency and, and jitter, you weren't always sure what you were going to get. And so what's happening is that all the densities are going up. We're connecting a lot more IoT. We're connecting a lot... People have more things yeah. that are connecting. You know, how many devices they carry on them is all going up. And and so you, you get high density experiences even when you're at home. Say So take your house, for example. Yeah. You're high density in your house. Exactly. Phone, laptops. TVs. Yep, exactly. You know, streaming devices, you know, yep. all that, right? It's now connecting to Wi-Fi, your door locks, your smoke detectors, your security systems, all these things, light bulbs, all these things are going on the network. And so when the density start going up, you start to get this problem where they start interfering with each other. They're yep. all vying for the network and they all have different expectations. So carrier sense, network. multiple access, collision avoidance has always been our thing? That's the thing. And so what happened with Wi-Fi 6 that yeah. was so significant is that we went from OFDM yeah. to OFDMA. And what that means is that we can now schedule in the frequency domain. So not only can we schedule individual devices, almost like time slicing, okay. right? Now what we can do is we can have multiple devices communicating at the same time. That's a big change. Scheduling in the frequency domain. That's far more efficient. Yeah. It eliminates a lot of your collisions. Yeah. Not only that, but in Wi-Fi 6, the network can schedule the devices. So instead of everything just jumping on, yeah. now, now you can be specific about scheduling those devices. And so this ability to schedule means that in high-density environments where, say, you get to 50% utilization and the, that collision domain starts coming up, things collide, back off, retransmit, something else is transmitting, you back off again, you back off further, right? Then the experience starts to degrade and you're actually getting less traffic through yeah. the system. Yeah. By scheduling it, what that means is we can drive utilization 80, 90%. Oh, wow. Do you know what else is based on OFDMA? Yeah. What? 5G. Oh, okay. So so at the lower layers, you're starting to see this convergence on how to make wireless work well. And we're learning from these two different in industries. We're learning from each other. Now, if you want to get deterministic in your wireless experience, you want to know what you're going to get, there's another thing you have to worry about. Yeah. Interference. Of course, yeah. Right, especially in unlicensed. Yeah. Right, so you don't know. Someone else comes walking in and they're using the spectrum. You got a MiFi device or something like that. Um, these point-to-point -point type things, you know, communicating on the network means that that can happen at any time. And so that you, you can get things interfering with the network. So when we go to 6E, what we do is we go from the ability to schedule to now having that additional spectrum. In Europe, you got 450 more you know, megahertz and other countries, Saudi, US, and others are you're allocating 1200 megahertz. This means that you can isolate the spectrum. And if you can isolate the spectrum, you don't have to contend. So okay. now you're scheduling in the stack and you're not contending on the spectrum side. So this means you can get a, a very reliable result because as we get faster and faster in these networks, the speed is almost growing as fast as we consume. Yeah. I mean, there, 
Never enough bandwidth. There's never enough bandwidth. But what we're paying a lot of attention to now in these next generation applications is latency and jitter. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what we're doing. And that's in 6E, right? That's in 6E. Now, enter 7. So you see a lot of the technology that's been developed in Wi-Fi 7 is really towards this, how do we make sure that we understand these latency characteristics and we can do ultra-reliable type communications. So look, it's a big spec, hundreds over a thousand pages. We expect so you to summarize it in so, like a minute. So, so <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot we could talk about, whether we were talking about puncturing and wider channels and higher qualm rates and all that. But, you know, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, what are some of the really cool things that are coming that in seven, make, yeah. in seven great, yeah. that make it better. So the, the one that everyone's talking about is called MLO, multi-link okay. operation. Um, or sometimes you see it as MLD, multi-link device. All that means is a, a multi-link device is a device that can do multi-link operation. You know, it means the same thing. What they're doing there is that now a device can connect to an AP using two different pieces of spectrum. So like a phone could pro possibly do that in future, right? So, so that's exactly what's going to happen now. Now all your phones are using multiple pieces of spectrum now, Yeah. right? 2.4, 5, and now the 6 gigahertz. So now what you can do is you could connect doing some a, a reliable connection where you would connect using two radios. And so say you get interference on one, right? The other one is still going through. And if the interference doesn't go away, then that interfered channel, that that leg, that second connection will move to another piece of the spectrum so that you have two good connections again. Now, there's multiple things you can do with MLO. You can send more traffic. You can do it for reliability. But the idea here is how do we make it far more reliable than we've had in the past? You know, pushing towards that five, six nines reliability that you need for some of these next generation applications. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you're talking about healthcare and you're connecting heart monitors and medical equipment, whether you're talking about a warehouse and you're controlling the robots that are running around stocking shelves, right? Where you're talking about the next generation of of XR, the AR, VR type stuff, where you yeah. need that low latency so that you don't get sick because it doesn't look real to yeah. your mind. Yeah. You need to have that refresh rate. All these next generation things need these next generation characteristics at high density in a deterministic way. So that's what we're working on coming into the, the next generation is that ultra reliability. Now, beyond that, there's new technologies that are going into the spec that allow you to control your latency characteristic. Okay. So we first did this with Apple. Yeah. Right? So have you heard of Fastlane Plus? I've heard of it, but I but explain it. Yeah, that I so, don't know. So so this is what's really cool. So a lot of in a lot of networks, say you're on your cellular system, a lot of networks are designed to be fair. Yep. So if there's two of you going into a cell tower, it'll It'll split the bandwidth between you. If there's 200 of you going into the cell tower, it'll split it across all 200 of yeah. you, right? But in enterprise applications and many times in venues, you don't really want to be fair. You want to be able yeah. to prioritize traffic. you got mission-critical traffic that you want to make sure goes through before something else. So, so you don't want to prioritize a email yeah. or a web browse when you're trying to control a robot or you're doing some XR application yeah. that's going to be disruptive by doing it. So you can, you can catch that in the background, right? And so, and so that's what becomes very important. Now, what we did with, with Fastlane Plus is the device can tell us what it needs. So instead of just scheduling, you know, in a fair way and going around to all the different devices, now what we can do is we can say, hey, we know we need to schedule this device at this rate for this much bandwidth. You, but you're trusting the device, you're trusting that that device is saying who it, that it's giving you the correct information, right? Because as, as soon as you said that, I said, oh, I can write a hacking application now. So, so, so you're bringing up a really good point because in... The way that we did this traditionally is you did that in the application. Yeah. And if you do it in the application, now you got to trust the application. Well, then you got to trust the developer. Wait a minute, yeah. there's millions of applications. We got to trust yeah. all these, you know, put it in the OS. Oh, I see. Yeah. Trust right. like Apple or Microsoft. That's right. So, so, so now Apple's interested in providing you the best experience as a user. Yeah. So Apple's going to do it right yeah. because they have the same goal to achieve that the enterprise wants to achieve or the yeah. user wants to achieve. Yeah, I can trust Apple, but I wouldn't trust myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now that we know that, so, so now there's another aspect, right? It's one thing to say this application needs to be serviced at this rate. Yeah. It's another thing for you, the venue owner, the IT department, to say what's important, what's mission yeah. critical for that venue. Because you go into an 
a football ele- stadium elementary or... school. Oh, okay. Yeah, good and one. they might say, you know what, we're using we're using robo blocks to, do, yep. and they want to prioritize that, you know, and we, yeah. or at Cisco, or we, the opposite, yeah, yeah, or the opposite, you know, we might want to prioritize WebEx and yep. you know, and in some of your business yep. type applications, you're a hospital, you might want to prioritize the medical yep. equipment, yep. you know, and the IoT type things, so that you're not missing, you know, nurse pages yep. or that data going back to the the nursing station, and so you got these different things that you want to prioritize. So now what you want to do is you want to take the application requirements. Plus the IT department's priorities for that business and for that service so that you can queue appropriately going into the network so that you're giving the low latency to those mission critical applications. And so that's what we're doing as we go forward. We call it SLA based Wi-Fi. So the, the, the AP or the, the controller sets that and controls what the client can do, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, now the, the controller may not know what the application wants, yeah. but it knows it's if it's an important application or not, right? And then if it's important, give it the characteristic it needs to service that client so that it gets serviced when it should. Yeah. Now, next generation, now this is sort of secret stuff, you know, this is sort of... <laughs> no, we're not recording, know, so that's yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is, going, yeah. this is some of the back the back lab stuff. So what we've done and we've we've done some proof of concepts working with some of our chipset friends like uh, Intel for example yeah. on a technology that's called wireless TSN. Okay. And what that does is it not only will prioritize based on, you know, what the service you need. If you need to be serviced at a certain rate, you can go device device device, right, and give it that rate, but the queue may not be ready. Yeah. The queue may not be ready to transmit. Yeah. Right, because the application hasn't filled the queue yet. Yeah. So now what we can do is synchronize the scheduling to when the queue is ready. Oh wow! So as soon as the data is ready to send, you schedule it. Right, goes up into the network. Right now, you can get your latency down sub ten millisecond. That's amazing. Reliably. But that's right? seven, right? We're not. We're not so, getting that so, now. So, that's not today. Well, that's that might be seven plus. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> But I just wanted to give you a little bit of a flavor. No, I love it. I love it where it's, where it's going. Yeah. Sorry, so, I didn't so, want to interrupt you. So carry on. Yeah, no, I mean, well, you're supposed to interrupt me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to give you an idea. You know, so it's hard to say when some of these new types of capabilities like that will come out. Yeah. But what I'm saying is there's so much that we can do to drive reliability, to drive down latency, to make sure that we can do it when servicing much higher densities than we've ever done before. Uh, you know, as I was I was talking earlier um, with some other wireless technical folks, we're asking more of wireless than we ever have. Exactly. Yeah. In five years, we're going to ask more. So, you know, what's what's the old saying? This isn't your father's Wi-Fi. You know, it's <laughs> this is the next generation Wi-Fi type capability. And so we have to do Kids this. Kids don't even know what a cable is. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't have an Ethernet port even no. on my PC anymore. Yeah. You know, so there's there's a whole world of cool stuff that's uh, coming as we go through these uh, different technologies and these technologies releases. We've been talking about like future stuff, which is really exciting, and I can see the need for it. I can't go and buy that today. Is, do you have any like cool? Well, some of you- it you can. And that's but great. Fastlane Plus is out there. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, so you can. What about are there any other cool things that I, that are available that you that you can share like off camera? <laughs> So, uh, so it seems like it's still running. You know, it's <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to trick you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, what's happening is that um, for a long time, when we were doing Wi-Fi or you know GSM or 5G technologies, what we were really talking is about bearer technologies. You know, whether we're connecting a person or a thing. But more and more, what we're seeing is that there's a there's more and more expectations of what that AP can do. Yeah. Um, we're offering, for example, environmental sensors. You know, what's the air quality? So the AP does that? The AP can do that. Oh, okay. Right? Why not? It's located. It's Makes on sense. the ceiling. It can pick those things up. I don't have to buy some other silly device to check it, the air exactly. quality. So, so you're getting this convergence of what used to be, I would say, siloed type technologies all coming in. You know, in some cases, you're enhancing the AP. In some cases, you're enhancing the switch network and you're using the PoE, right? But you're, you're using that same infrastructure to bring that all back. Now, one of the coolest technologies, you know, it, you know, I'll say it's new, but it's actually ultra wideband is what I want to talk about. But it's actually been around for a long time, military uses and things like that. Um, but it's now it's coming available to all of us. And what ultra wideband does is it uses a very wide signal yep. to locate things. It can okay. locate your phone. For example, ultra wideband's built into a Samsung device, 
right? It's already in the silicon, right? We're seeing it being developed in, in Apple devices. The, the, um, that new uh, Apple tag. I was going to say, is this like finding a tag? Top yeah, yeah. It's, so you can find a tag, you can find a device. Um, there's multiple different ways that you can actually apply it. Um, but what's interesting about it is we've never been able to do location to this kind of resolution. So with ultra wideband, you're getting now resolutions of like, you know, a few inches. Oh, wow. Right. We used to be able to tell, you know, where you were within several meters. Yeah. Right. Now, now you could tell, you know, where I'm sitting, where you're sitting. And, and to not only good accuracy, but at, you know, at a high refresh rate. And so this brings up whole new ways of doing location services and, and capabilities for tracking things, for example, yeah. for wayfinding, right? Um, there's all, all sorts of inventory um, type capabilities. So look forward to that next generation and these type of location services because you can plug it into a USB port today. So everyone, sorry, we being interrupted, so I have to end the, the uh, interview. Matthew, thanks.